Um, so um, I'm presenting the paper on behalf of my co-authors, uh, Boniface uh, Epo and uh, Francis Mbai. Um, and actually, just to say that this, our paper, and actually the project grew out of uh, a conference we had in New Winder, invited by our chair. Thank you. Continue, please. Uh, I can, uh, yeah. So that's the backing ground of the, the plan of the presentation. And um, so to achieve sustainable development goals in Africa, reforms are needed, okay, which will reduce inequalities of opportunities. Uh, these are exogenous sources of well-being. Yeah. And also, reforms are needed to initiate and sustain inclusive growth. So inclusive growth is pro-poor growth that benefits the poorest 40% of the population in absolute and, and relative terms. Reforms are also required to initiate and sustain pro-growth poverty reduction. Actually, this is what uh, uh, the paper by UC and the topic as, uh, as actually is their main finding. So this is from them. So, so pro growth poverty reduction is poverty reduction that enables the poor to increase their own incomes via participation in the growth process. Uh, it's not in, in difficult actually to, uh, to realize that the poor can be only lookers of the growth process. Here we are actually uh, pro poor growth uh, makes it possible for the poor just to, to, to stand by as growth occurs and then they get some redistribution from that. And the two approaches complement each other. Okay. Um, and um, so, but in order to start this process where uh, in growth reduces poverty, and poverty reduction also leads to, to faster growth. Now, policymakers uh, need evidence um, that will enable them um, to figure out how to increase the incomes of the, of the households. And also to figure out um, what happens um, when, uh, in this, what happens actually to inequality when the dispute policies are implemented. We need evidence on that. Now, on the first point, how, how the incomes of the households can be uh, increased, we use econometric analysis to show actually the role of human capital formation in increasing the, the level of the well-being of the population. And on the second point, how the distributive measures um, affect income inequality we use a factual counterfactual simulation to uh, simulations to generate that evidence. Actually, we have handed some of this in our plenary session. Um, so, so actually, the main objectives of the third are two: uh, to study the effects of human capital on household world and being, and we proxy the household world and being by per capita and or equivalent. Uh, household consumption, and we assess, or we want to assess the impact of circumstances and effort on inequality in uh, household income. Actually, which is our proxy for household well-being. So the literature we are, we are going to hand about it. So the contributors of literature in this room. So I will not actually dwell on that, but on concepts. I will clarify a few things. Uh, so there are two main determinants of well-being of the household. How well, how well, um, how the household is doing economically. The first set of factors are the effort factors. And uh, the key one here is human capital. And we focus on health and education. Also employment to some extent. The circumstances which are uh, which the household cannot do much about, they are given the narrative to those. This is land, the infrastructure, where they live, gender, and so on. We actually also saw this in our plenary session. 
And um, now, how, how now do we, indetam how do we uh, investigate the effect of circumstances and effort on, on, on the world being, on the per capita income of the household, households? So the first question there, okay, we are uh, regressing the world being per capita income on in circumstances and also on effort. But if we do that, we have uh, the endogeneity problem, which I will not uh, uh, say much about. And uh, so what we do is we estimate equation two in stand, where we, we actually regret, where we endogenize effort, endogenize effort. We're using in, in some instruments that we, we, I may discuss later if we have time. So actually, so we use equation number two uh, to do two things. One, to find out how circumstances affect the level of income. And also, we also use the same one, having estimated it, to, to, to do counterfactual analysis, to ask, suppose we equalize circumstances. We give everyone, say, the same, uh, say, level of, um, say, land, amount of land living effort the same. What happens to distribution? And we do something similar with effort. And we use this method given to us by wound range. So the data is from, um, actually from Cameroon and uh, Kenya. Uh, for Cameroon, the data comes from the household survey for 2007 and 2014. For Kenya, 2005 and 2015. These data sets are similar in the way they are collected, actually. So, we, so they are measured basically the, the same way. So the key result is human capital formation and the circumstances both affect the level of the household world being and also the distribution of that world being, of that per capita income across households, but in, in complex ways. Okay, they vary by, um, by, type of, by type of, say, uh, and level of education, the quality of it, and also the effects varying by region. And we find that the same, the effects of circumstances and also efforts actually, uh, sorry, the effects of circumstances are also uh, as complex. So we start now, this table one presents the, um, uh, how, effort, human capital in this case, years of schooling, affect per capita income. Actually, you can see the last, the last column there, the effect is positive. So people with schooling, a year of schooling, schooling in this case for Cameroon, increases per capita income by about 3%, uh, 3.4%. And uh, we also emphasize that, that the omitted variables which interact with the schooling, which affect also, which affect the per capita income. And those omitted variables uh, actually tend to reduce uh, the effect of schooling. Okay, so that's actually the main point in this table. But then the circumstance uh, variables here, um, which are age in this case, actually the effect is, um, is uh, is U shaped, and uh, female hand and households, contrary to what we might think, have higher incomes than than male hand and households. That probably has to do with the fact that uh, f females who are hand of households have other attributes that we don't we don't see, like they may be better educated. They might have uh, other other attributes that contribute. Uh, positively towards, towards income. Um, and, oh, oh, okay, so that's the main point there. Now we come to Kenya. What we find in Kenya, the main variable, uh, human capital variable here is sickness. And what we find is uh, people report sickness have much lower incomes than people not reporting sickness, assuming they are not sick. Okay, actually that's a very, a very huge uh, negative effect on income. And it's not uh, surprising, given that we are talking mainly about uh, agricultural households, where sickness can basically wipe out, wipe out a, a family's income. And again, there are, uh, there are 
omitted variables in this, uh, in this model, we tend to interact with the sickness to increase household incomes. Okay, that doesn't sound intuitive, but uh, we, can think, we can discuss those. And circumstances variables also affect the same uh, income the same way as we saw in, we sh we saw in Cameroon. Uh, the energy effect is uh, U-shaped, U and uh, now the shocks, the uh, basically drought and so on, have negative effects on um, uh, household income. Um, now, the, this table now, here, we, we look at the, the inequality in the actual distribution, in the actual distribution of, in, of well being with this income. Now, I, some people may ask, is why am I, where are we saying actual? And actually, this, this are estimated. Yeah, these are estimated uh, 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 relationships. Uh, it's simply because of the property that these linear models, the means, say the mean income, in the, in the predicted, in, the mean for predicted, predicted, predicted income is the same as what you observe in the data, okay? So for overall Gini, uh, for Cameroon, uh, we, between 2007 and 2014, the Gini actually increased for overall. Uh, um, Increase for the for overall, but for Kenya actually it 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 it, 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 it decreased instead, and you see something similar for uh, Gini related to circumstances and Gini related to uh, to effort. And if you compare now the uh, the actual the counterfactual uh, changes in Gini, in the first column there, what we see is uh, the overall Gini there. Uh, for, in the, for actually 0.4, actually 41%. Uh, when now we equalize uh, circumstances, it drops to uh, at 6%. So actually, what we see across the board, the, across the sections, is equalizing of circumstances. It actually, actually reduces inequality. So circumstance, uh, making sure that people have the same opportunities is good for uh, equality in the in, in society. And we find something similar actually in Kenya, but looks looks the opposite, but actually the, it's the same effect. So if we equalize the circumstances, here circumstances here, uh, there are shocks, those are uh, lack of uh, lack of rain. So um, the overall, what we find is uh, uh, the overall imp inequality, the engine there, is 0.39, it's actually, it's actually increasing. And uh, if you also equalize, equalize sickness, what you find also, the inequality increases. Other means rising, okay? So, so actually, uh, um, so you, if you, you, you equalize shocks, bad things, you, you, you equalize sickness, which is also a bad thing, the effect of that is to increase inequality. If you reduce, so, okay, sorry. The opposite, of course, actually this resource show, this table shows the same finding as in Cameroon. Okay, so policy messages. So, equalizing effort rate and variables, for example, education and health, is inequality reducing. Equalizing negative shocks, for example, livelihood risks due to pandemics and crop failures is inequality increasing. So, on this uh, point number two, if we increase, say, if we equalize better health, that actually that reduces inequality, which is what we, 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 we saw in Cameroon. Now, inequality in the human capital endowment, endowment is associated with gains in growth and also is poverty uh, reducing. And uh, the last two points here are that there are circumstances like weather shocks and the pandemics that we do not want to equalize. And also there are many tests that we don't want to withdraw from population that is already, that already benefiting them. So in that case, we need to figure out how to bring more amenities to the people who don't have them rather than equalize. 
So the term equalization depends on the context in terms of the effects that we want to get from equalization. And these effects of policies depend on how they are done. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman.